He's got a figure where, and I've notated it as well, it's just an eighth note. Just a simple eighth note, but you're off on the end of one. And you really have to pay attention to that. He was really precise about that. And if you play it longer, then, um, then you really hear it. So if you want to match what, uh, what he's doing, you've got to make sure that uh, you're, you're off on the end. And that eighth note, it's not a, it's not a staccato. It's not a da. It's, it's da, da. And what I ended up doing was listening for the hi-hat for the drums, because the drums are um, playing eighth notes on the hi-hat. So da, 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 da. start listening for the and of one on the hi-hat and make sure that you can hear that and you're not playing on top of that. And uh, um, so that's what I would kind of concentrate on. And uh, from playing all these years, I kind of know to do that too, because when you do that, all of a sudden you're not only listening to yourself, but you're listening to what else is, is going on with, uh, within the music, you know, hopefully with other people, not just a, a loop like I'm doing. But, uh, you know, when you're with uh, live people, you start listening to what everyone's doing and, you know, and you start playing off of each other. And that's, I think, what uh, when a band gets really tight and, you know, that's, as a musician, that's so much fun when that happens, you know, when the band is really listening. And uh, I think that's where groove and the tightness and all that comes along. How that comes along is by listening to each other. The other thing uh, I had to watch out for was the uh, in the chorus, just trying to find a consistent, regular way. First few times I was trying to just sight read through, and I found that I was jumping all over the place, and it was it's really easy to get lost and kind of confused on did I do that one time or two times? And but anyway, in the end, I said, okay, let's just take a look at what's happening here and find a regular way to play that. And I think that's a, that, that can be a lesson in itself, too. You know, if you find you're jumping around too much, kind of just stop and look at what you're doing and see if there's a simpler way to, to play it. And also to, uh, to keep my bass quiet in between when you're not playing. You know, that's just as important because you are jumping around a, an awful lot and it's easy to start making some noises. So... I, uh, I had to, you know, be aware of what was happening and, and try to, I think, maybe add a little softer touch to it. It is a ballad, you know, and it is kind of a, a soft love song, so uh, you can play a little softer and maybe that makes it a little easier to keep the instrument quiet. Okay, so what I'd like to do is I'm going to play it again for you, same tempo, uh, same arrangement. I'm going to give you a, a free bar at the beginning, but then uh, read it down as is. And uh, thanks for watching. We'll see you at the end.
Okay, so there you go. One on One by Hall and & Oates and T-Bone Walker was the bass player on that track. You can find this transcription at musento.com under Intermediate Learning Songs and also at gregstranscripts.com. And thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe and check out the websites. And we'll see you again next time. Thanks. Bye-bye.